Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our high school and middle school open house for Kenner Discovery. We're going to get started here in just a moment. We're just giving people a few minutes to join us. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to Kenner Discovery Health Sciences Academy Virtual Open House. My name is Curtin Falls, and I'm the Executive Board President of Student Council. My name is Tenno Flory. I am the President of National Honor Society and Executive Board Vice President for Student Council. And we're both students here at Kenner Discovery. Our school offers so many different opportunities for us to assure that we are ready for high school and beyond. This evening, you will meet several members of the school community who will tell you more about academics, clubs, sports, support staff, and what makes us truly unique. Heart. And now I would like to introduce our head of school, Dr. Patty Glazer. Good evening, everyone. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Dr. Patty Glazer, founding head of Discovery Schools. I've been opening successful schools since 1994. So while this isn't my first rodeo, it is certainly one of my proudest accomplishments. Thank you for being here tonight and for your interest in Kenner Discovery Middle School and High School. We are now in our ninth year of operation, opening in 2013 to 420 students. In 2021, 22, we educate over 2,700 students on four campuses, all while maintaining our high academic performance and high demand status. Many in the community have asked me to what do I attribute the consistent performance of Kenner Discovery? We're going to try to capture that for you this evening as you hear from so many of our teachers, middle level administrators and principals. Thank you to thanks to the vision and various areas of expertise of our board. We are supported and guided through our growth and ongoing improvements, whether it be in technology, finance, personnel, facility, legal or academic measures. Our business office led by Don Wheat is efficient and hardworking. We have consecutive clean audits and a growing fund balance, which allows us to offer more activities to our students. The true secret to our success lies in shared leadership, where everyone has a voice and decisions are made as a team. When challenges arise, we ask faculty to come to us with potential solutions and to sit with us and brainstorm other possible solutions. We ask ourselves, is this decision in line with the vision and mission of the school? And is it good for kids? If the answer to both of those is yes, then we're probably making a good decision. Our test scores speak for themselves. We're consistently performing as an AB academic school. We're so proud of our hardworking faculty and students. This type of consistent performance shows that our instructional delivery is well thought out and intentional. Parent partnerships also contribute to our consistent success. Together, we can work through difficult challenges for you and your family. Sometimes with the many daily and unusual challenges that occur in a school, it just takes a superhero. And luckily we have many superheroes on our campuses. Our current KDHSA wait list is over a thousand students. Our applicant pool for the coming year from pre-K through 12th grade is 800 plus strong. The majority of our openings will be in pre-K, K and ninth grade, but please don't let that deter you, apply. We backfill seats every year as they come open and that backfilled seat may be for your child. Student employee retention is over 90%. 
The last few years, you will often see me in a construction hat and work boots. This is because the board and myself believe children and faculty learn and teach best in updated or newly built facilities. So I will dig my construction hat out as we start two new projects. We're excited to add two more modular buildings to the Vintage Campus in March of this year. Ida pushed back the expected addition a bit, but we will get it done this school year. We're also excited to begin the search for a construction firm to build our 21st Century Arts and Athletic Performance Center. I think our AD may have a little preview of that when he speaks. It will complement our 21st Century High School facility. On both middle school and high school campuses, we are proudly equipped with one-to-one -one technology for students. Middle school students have use of many parts of the high school facility, including the beautiful library, some of the science labs, the cafeteria, band room, and of course, they will have use of the new Arts and Athletic Performance Center. Eventually in phase two, middle school will have its own academic wing in the high school building. I'm working consistently now on funding for that next exciting phase. We're very happy and excited to have you in this session tonight and wish so much that it could be in person. We fully realize a school for your child is one of the biggest decisions you'll make in your life and we appreciate you considering KDHSA. With that being said, I'd like you to hear from so many other people at the school. And we'll start with Sharon Preen, who is our CAO and assistant head of school. And she is overseeing so much of that intentional learning that is going on and responsible for so much of our academic performance. Ms. Preen. Thank you, Dr. Glazer. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the virtual session tonight. Um, I'm Sharon Preen and um, as Dr. Glazer said, I oversee the curriculum, classroom instruction, student achievement in grades pre-K through high school. As you'll hear and see throughout this virtual session, we have dedicated and amazing educators, fabulous students, a positive community with a lot of heart. You're gonna hear a lot about heart tonight, a unique school culture, and a mindset of developing lifelong learners. As we say every day at Discovery Schools, Swamp owls are awesome, and it's a great day to be a swamp owl. Oh yeah. I just wanna give you a brief overview of our instructional approach, and you'll hear so much more from others to show how it actually comes to life. Our curriculum fosters critical thinking, problem solving, inquiry and collaboration, character education, in-demand knowledge, and transportable skills. We have a strong focus on academic excellence and preparation for success in college, and future careers. We offer a well-rounded education, education considering the needs of students first. And we often have students participate in our, our development of courses that we offer and clubs that we offer and um, new programs, all based on in, in, you know, getting feedback from the students of what they need and what they're interested in. So our students make meaningful learning connections in all subjects through hands-on learning and real-world application. We integrate technology, digital skills, online learning platforms, and digital citizenship into our curriculum to build 21st century global skills. One-to-one -one computing for all K-12 students and content is accessible through web-based platforms. Our science lab experiences are for all of our students in K-12 with real world connections, such as tending to a butterfly garden, taking care of container gardens, harvesting herbs and vegetables, the egg drop challenge to determine, determine the force of gravity, medical detective projects to diag diagnose a disease and study DNA. So these kids do real world exciting things that bring learning to life. Science focused community outreach projects and science centered clubs further enhance our health sciences mission, such as robotics, science Olympiad, design and innovation, and HOSA, which you'll hear more about. It's the Future Healthcare Professionals Club. We have a health fair, a STEM fest, and we have an incredible educational partnership with Ochsner Health System. Our rigorous curriculum and instructional approach propels our students to be engaged, active learners. Our students learn to take ownership of their learning, set goals, reflect on learning, and demonstrate self-advocacy. 
We celebrate our students' individual learning styles and provide support and enrichment opportunities for our students to reach their full potential. We always say at Discovery, we, we educate all kinds of owls. And you'll learn again, we are swamp owls. So that's why we educate all kinds of owls. Discovery Middle School and High School, and particularly high school, um, offers a variety of course choices such as advanced placement, dual enrollment courses, career and technical education, honor level courses, workforce development with multiple pathways related to the health sciences occupations. We have a wide variety of elective choice courses in, throughout K-12, music, theater, visual arts, graphic arts, STEM, technology, business, hospitality, foreign language, and humanities. And our high school project Lead the Way Biomedical Sciences and Engineering program is a series of four courses that develops transportable skills and students may earn college credit if they complete all four courses. We also just um, added Project Lead the Way into the middle school and we're so excited about that. You'll hear about that more later. Um, our goal for our Swamp Owls when they complete their acad academic journey with Discovery is for them to be globally conscious, innovative, lifelong learners who are career and college workforce ready, particularly in the health sciences field. Our strong school culture strives to cultivate model citizens with heart, our core values. You will hear about heart from our next panelist, Dr. Michael Kennedy, who is our director of culture. Dr. Kennedy. Thank you, Ms. Preen. I'm Dr. Kennedy, Michael Kennedy Jr., the director of culture for Discovery Schools. This is my eighth year at Discovery Schools, and it's a pleasure to be here. I'm excited to share with you all what makes Discovery a great place for all students. Discovery Schools offers an amazing experience full of heart. Heart are our co core values, honor, endurance, academic achievement, responsibility, and tolerance. It's something that we use every single day to make sure our students and families understand the way that we operate and the way that we expect our students to behave at our school on a daily basis. Um, our quest to embody heart is shared among all of our families, community partners and employees. Um, we have and strive every day to maintain our culture of family and community. That's very important to us that everyone that comes to our school that enters into our space on our campuses feels like they're part of a family and a part of our community. Um, also Discovery Schools strives for fun um, and that's across the board for our students to have a great time but also for our faculty and staff to enjoy being in each other's presence um, during school and also when we don't went outside of school when we gather together. Uh, we also aim to balance um, our behavioral modifications with our students that may be struggling sometimes in their behaviors with positive behavior uh, interventions as well. We aim to do this by working with the whole child, uh, making sure that we reach them in many different capacities, um, socially, physically, emotionally. Uh, we want them to be healthy, healthy in all areas. And so we strive daily to, to do that. Um, in our quest to do that, we are very proactive so we utilize um, these different opportunities that we have at the school to make that happen. So we have advisories um, that we do in partnership with our counseling program. Uh, the deans and disciplinarians of the school work very closely with the counselors to ensure that our schools um, have a balanced experience with us. Um, we have had very few uh, major discipline infractions that occur at our schools at all sites. Um, and we strive to do that through those proactive measures to make sure that our students feel comfortable with us uh, every single day that they're at school. Um, our goal for every student is to come to us um, as early as they possibly can and then grow with us and graduate from uh, Discovery Schools as well. Finally, we're here uh, to build relationships with parents and community partners as well. It's very important to us, as was stated by our head of school, Dr. Glazer, that we build a partnership with parents on a regular basis. Um, every opportunity that we have to bring them into the school, of course, right now it's been challenging, but we strive to make sure that we bring them in and allow them to experience the heart um, and live those values as well through our school. Um, and also, uh, we again, as I stated, we are aiming always for graduation. So our main goal for our students to make it to graduation and to be very excited about the time that they had here at Discovery Schools. At this time, I'd like to introduce the middle school principal, Mrs. Karen Henderson. Thank you, Dr. Kennedy. Hi, my name is Karen Henderson and I'm the middle school principal here at Kenner Discovery. 
Uh, you've heard a lot of wonderful things from our head of school, along with our assistant head of school, Ms. Preen. And just in case you haven't heard it, we want to hit it again and reiterate just the dynamic kinds of things we offer here at the middle school that's not normally associated with what middle schools can offer. So I just want to highlight, if in case you didn't hear, the one-to-one -one technology we offer, the rigorous core classes that prepare students for each grade level, but more importantly, for the high school as well. We have an extensive array of co-curricular classes such as STEM, Spanish, theater, band and orchestra, and traditional options such as PE and art as well. We offer a variety of clubs and several extracurricular options for students as well, such as student council, sports, dance, and cheer. Our middle school schedule here is thoughtfully planned. It's thoughtfully planned with the middle school learner in mind which allows for well-rounded student experience and prepares them for high school. Some of those things, as you've just heard Dr. Kennedy mention in terms of advisory and also having independent studies, as you'll hear from um, often or often hear Ms. Bonanno, our curriculum, our, I'm sorry, our division head, because she deals with all things curriculum. But when we talk about that thoughtfully planned schedule, we make certain that our students have an opportunity during independent study to get the support and the help that they need we also offer Algebra 1 and English 1 here at the middle school because we know that is exactly what it propels students in terms of meeting that rigorous academic expectation at the high school. And some of the um, very important and very influential people that we lean on here at the middle school level are part of our important team members. And those individuals that might speak later on during our panel discussion is Ms. Bonanno, our division head, we have our great level leaders, which is a structure here at our middle school. So we have Ms. Bach, who's our fifth grade level leader, Ms. Dufren, who's sixth grade, Ms. Bolin, who's seventh grade, Ms. Barris, who's our eighth grade lead, and also Ms. Zeldin, who's our STEM teacher and also leader with co-curricular, and Ms. Summering, who's an English teacher here, but also a part of our student council. So those are some of the members that will speak during our panel discussion, but why we want you to continue to think about Kinder Discovery at the middle school because of all the wonderful things we offer that many middle schools don't often have an opportunity to offer. So please continue to consider if you want that well-rounded education for your student, Kinder Discovery Middle School has it. And so with that, I'd like to all kick it to our dynamic principal at the high school, Ms. Candace Schott. Thank you so much, Ms. Henderson. Welcome future Swamp Owls. Uh, Discovery High School houses 755 Swamp Owls in grades nine through 12 on our beautiful new campus on Loyola Drive. You saw some pictures of it that have uh, gone through some of these roles. The campus holds nine science labs, including our hospital simulation lab, which will be talked about later, and our engineering lab. Our state-of-the-art library hosts the media room where we produce our new podcast, Swamp Owls After Hours. Our arts wing houses studio art labs, digital design labs, theater and band rooms surrounding a gallery space for both student and faculty art. Our students can follow a college prep curriculum with multiple honors, AP and dual enrollment classes. We have students who graduate with as many as 12 to 15 college credits whenever they start, and they can graduate with even more. Um, courses include, um, also include our new partnership with Auctioner Delgado and the Department of Education, which will allow students to graduate high school and enter a pre-nursing program. This, this program starts this year. As an open enrollment school, we also have programs for students interested in apprenticeships in the culinary arts, digital design, and marketing, as well as other health science fields. Discovery has a graduation rate of 97%. This graduation rate is higher than any open enrollment school in the greater New Orleans area, not just in Jefferson Parish, in the entire greater New Orleans area. We are excited about that. We are excited about the bright future Swamp Owls ha have ahead of them. And we hope you can be a part of that future. I'd like to pass it on to Cassie Cusacks, our high school division head, to talk a little bit about our curriculum and about our community partnerships. Ms. Cusacks. Thanks, Ms. Schott. Good evening, everyone. Um, I am reporting to you from the Auctioner Simulation Lab on our Loyola campus where the high school students are currently housed. Um, I was also asked to kind of present another unique side of me as being founding faculty 
and a founding parent here at Discovery Schools. I think it's important to note that this option is available anywhere that any school could do this. I think the difference is our teachers. We have the autonomy in our classroom to build our curriculum and we have the opportunity and support in that shared leadership model that we can have a say so in our curriculum. So our teachers are really invested and take advantage of these opportunities that we have here at Discovery. Um, as you can see behind me, and you'll see in the video in a little while, we have high fidelity mannequins. We have a fully operational simulation lab on campus. Um, in a traditional year, we would be able to take field trips with Auctioner. And then, as you may have heard, we also have a um, K-8 school that came about with our partnership with Auctioner. Throughout my journey here in the past nine years, I've been able to grow from a classroom teacher to an administrator, mid-level leader here at Discovery. So the opportunities are abundant for not only teachers, but also our future swamp owls. So thank you for coming tonight. And I believe Ms. Newton will share a video from some of our students who are involved in our biomedical program. Have a good night. Thank you so much to our middle and high school teams. I'm gonna take an opportunity here, one, to introduce myself. I'm Natalie Newton. I'm the Director of Strategic Development for Discovery Schools. I'm also a founding parent. I have two children who have been with the school um, since the day it opened. Um, they started in kindergarten and second grade and they are now in eighth and 10th um, grades. Um, and it has been the best decision I have made for my family. So part of my job, which I failed to do, was address a little housekeeping. You've probably noticed by now that your chat is disabled. We encourage you at this time to submit any questions you have through the Q&A feature um, of our webinar. And with that, I will continue with our program. My name is Aya Ghanem, and I've attended Kenner Discovery Health Sciences Academy for the past seven years. I am currently the president of the Health Occupation Student of America Future Health Professionals, also known as HOSA. The support of our amazing administrators has taught us the skills to be the leaders we are today and in the future. Discovery Schools has helped us build very strong connections outside of school, such as the local Oshner hospitals, colleges, and various national scholarship programs that will help us further our education in the medical field. Our exceptional health science programs, such as biomedical, first responder, and sports medicine gives us the opportunity to get ahead in the real world. For example, at the end of the first responder course, our students are CPR certified and have the capability to become EMR certified. At the end of our biomedical program, we can become certified medical assistants. These programs have exposed us to various careers in the health sciences field right here in the Austin Simulation Lab. Simulation-based medical education is the way I developed health professional knowledge and skills. It has been a platform which provided me a valuable tool in learning how to resolve ethical tensions and practical dilemmas. My passion for this career path has been developed from day one at Kenner Discovery. I cannot say enough about the opportunities that this has provided for my future. And with that, just another reminder, please submit your questions through our Q&A. And I will turn it over to Ms. Michelle McCrary, our Director of Counseling for our Counseling and SPED teams. Sorry guys, I lost Michelle. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask Stacy Semke to step up and talk to us a little bit about SPED. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for participating in this evening. Um, again, my name is Stacy Stemke. I'm the Director of Special Education across all campuses. Our middle school and high school SPED department at Kenner Discovery the main goal is for them to provide an educational program that meets each student's academics, social, emotional, and physical needs. We offer a variety of classroom models and related services in order to address these student needs. Our classroom models can vary from a full inclusion with check-in minutes 
It can be a resource model where minutes can be delivered either individually or in a small group setting. Or we also have a more restricted um, self-contained environment where we focus on developing our students to the, the most that they can be. We believe in utilizing a team approach when planning for instruction, for services, and for transition. Our facility and our, our faculty consist of a SPED coordinator at every campus, special education teachers, and paraprofessionals at every camp campus, all of which who work very closely with our related service providers, our counseling staff, our administration staff, our general education teachers, our parents and students to ensure that all of their needs are met in the academic and in their future settings. So with that being said, I will, I guess, try Michelle McCrary again. And if not Michelle McCrary, we have Gerald to talk about our fabulous culinary program here at the school. I'm here, y'all. I apologize. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> um, my name is Michelle McCrary. I'm the counseling department director at Discovery Schools. Um, our middle school and high school counseling department consists of licensed counselors um, at each campus. We have a social worker. There's academic counselors that are um, provided for each grade level in order to help students out with their academics and with planning. Also a college and career counselor who is available for them. Um, our, uh, the counseling department for middle and high school includes opportunities for individual and small group counseling work. Um, it also offers participation in weekly advisory lessons, which focus on uh, various topics meant to educate students socially and emotionally. Um, the counseling team also joins forces with um, outside providers in order to do consult there. And we love and encourage and definitely offer parent consultation for various things. Our team also connects in with and works closely with our deans of students, as Dr. Kennedy said, during our uh, PBIS program and our response to intervention program that run actively throughout each school. And then we also participate and work closely with the special education department, as Stacy was just saying, with our section 504 and um, IEP programs that run. And as I pass this forward, Stacy, I don't know who you were supposed to um, introduce. We're passing it on to hear about our culinary program with Gerald. Gerald, it's your turn. Carol Fisher, thank you so much. And again, I apologize. Great job, guys. Shared leadership. <laughs> Gerald. Okay. Hi. Good, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Gerald Fisher. I'm the uh, director of ProStart. And with Deborah Bouillard, we teach ProStart 1, ProStart 2, baking and pastry and food and nutrition. Uh, our students is a two-year program with ProStart. And if we get through ProStart 1, ProStart 2, Serve Safe, we do our hours in the kitchens, uh, the kids can get a, a certificate of achievement uh, that will then, if they go on to culinary school, is like nine credit hours already built in. All right, that's a lot of money these kids can save. Our kids also learn the front of the house, the back of the house. Uh, we have uh, put on banquets here uh, for 200, people that we have served, plated, and taken care of everything that's going with that. And so this is a program that only 50 schools in the state of Louisiana have. Remember, there's over 400 high schools in Louisiana, and we're one of 50 that actually have the ProStart program. And I think we're going to see a video at this point. The ProStart program is one that students ready to work in the restaurants and any type of form. They learn how to plan the costs, they learn the servings, portion control, and how to bake and do anything in the kitchen, basically, that they may have to do. Now, we were asked this year if we'd be interested in preparing the food for the football team. and. So the students had a lot of fun doing that. We made spaghetti and meat sauce, spaghetti and meatballs, chicken alfredo, 
one of the coaches came in and made jambalaya one day. Um, red beans and rice from scratch, which many of the students have never done before. What was really nice is all the players extremely appreciative of it. They, every single one that came through when we were fixing their plates, always thank you, thank you, every single one, and let me know later on the following week what they thought of the food. And it was really nice to see how grateful they were for everything. One of the sayings you hear a lot around school was it takes a village. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have an opportunity to have a class to do these things for our team. Uh, it was kind of a, a you know an idea Coach Fisher had late into last year when we knew we'd have the new building and the kitchen up and running. And uh, you know they do a great job for us. The kids have had absolutely zero complaints about the meal so far. So it's always a good thing to have people on your side. And now I'll transition to my other job as director of athletics for Discovery Schools. As you can see in my background, we have a rendering of our arts center, uh, performing arts and athletic center, which I am extremely excited about finally getting that moving forward. But here at Kennedy Discovery, we have over 20 teams and of uh, sports that we offer between boys and girls. Uh, and we also offer dance and cheer, which is year round. And those 20 teams have, 20 sports have 32 different teams. We have over 300 student athletes, which is well over a, a third of our entire student population. We're very excited about that. Our middle school sports, uh, we have flag football, volleyball, basketball, cross country, softball, and baseball. Uh, and we have that at both our campuses. They're, they're extremely excited about getting that going. It's been a rough two years, but we have been able to field these teams this year. And we're really excited about that. Uh, our first graduating senior, not only was the valedictorian, but she also received a national NIAAA Scholar Athlete of the Year, female, for the entire United States, and went on to is going on to Xavier and playing softball. All right, so we have a well-rounded student body, but and athletics is part of that. But we're all student athletes first. And Natalie, I think I don't know if you have a, a, a role for sports or not. If not, we'll move on to. I do not have a separate athletics role pulled up. I will run that a little further in the program. If we want to kick it over to Sean Moore. Yep. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sean Moore. I serve as the student activities coordinator for the middle and high school here at Kenner Discovery. I also am one of the co-moderators of our high school student council, along with our librarian, Ms. Holly Johnson. At Kenner Discovery, we offer a wide variety of extracurricular clubs and organizations on campus that our students are free to join. Our music program allows our students to showcase their talents at football games, at pep rallies, Mardi Gras parades, and so much more. Additionally, our theater program showcases their talents on the big stage by acting, singing, and operating the equipment uh, backstage at our various musicals and plays that they put on throughout the years. Our student council is a student leadership organization, student led leadership organization that pro provides student expression and assistance to school activities. They give opportunities to provide student leadership around campus at different events, and they encourage student faculty and community relations to build. Additionally, we have HOSA, Future Health Professionals of America. You heard from Aya earlier speaking about that. That is a science-based organization that pushes our students to explore career paths and opportunities in healthcare, as well as to enhance the delivery, as well as the quality healthcare around our area into the community. Another major club that we have is National Honor Society. Uh, this elevates our students' commitment to the values of scholarship, service, leadership, as well as character challenging, uh, character building by challenging our students to go ahead and be active in school activities as well as student uh, community service, excuse me. Key Club focuses on providing our students with opportunities to provide and build character and develop leadership by working with local community organizations, providing, uh, with, excuse me, uh, food drives and so forth to make sure that our community is served. Also by serving next door at our um, retirement home next door, we work with the community in many different ways. Additionally, we offer robotics, Mu Alpha Theta, Freshman Academy Mentors, which is a, a way for our program to our high school seniors to, to mentor our freshmen here on campus. 
And we have a partnership with Chick-fil-A Leadership Academy so that our students can go out and learn different leadership skills uh, on a national basis. So as you can see with our middle and high school clubs and activities, uh, there are so many opportunities for our students to enrich their high school experience, not only in the classroom, but also through student activities, clubs and organizations around campus. Uh, if you have any questions, please let us know in the Q&A. Uh, I'd like to kick it over now to our admissions and application process with Griselle Suazo. Thank you so much. Hey, good evening. Thanks so much for joining us again. Um, now that you've heard all the wonderful things about Discovery Schools, you're probably asking yourself, how do I apply, right? So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to share my screen. Um, there's a couple of uh, different ways um, that you can access the application. Um, Natalie, I I am just able to share, um, but I'll walk you through it. Um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna make you a co-host right now. Okay. Give me just one second. Right on the Discovery um, website, so discoveryhsf.org, you're gonna find the app. All right, guys, hang tight. I'm gonna start a screen share with you to walk you through the application process. So when you come to our website, discoveryhsf.org, um, you will go ahead and click on admissions. That will take you to everything you need to know about Discovery Schools admissions, um, including our application period, which ends February 4th at noon. Applications have to be submitted by 11.59 a.m. Um, you can also learn about each school's admission process individually. So I would encourage you to go to Kenner Discovery, and this will actually tell you how our lottery works and the list of our lottery preferences. If you want to jump directly to the application, it's discoveryapplication.com. And you can go in and either create an account or start a new application. Um, everyone on this call, if you're interested in middle and high school, you'll find the Discovery Schools general application. The other applications you see on this, these screens are for our pre-K program, and those have certain restrictions in order to apply. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our admissions department. Um, it's admissions at discoveryhsf.org. I'm gonna try to see if I can get Griselle back up on the screen so that maybe um, maybe we'll circle back to that a little later. Um, with that, let's go ahead and start our Q&A session. Um, and then we'll see if we can get Garcelle back up on the screen here in a few minutes. We'll start with our first three questions. Um, let's see. First question, how is transportation and where are the pickup and drop off locations? Are you ready for me, Natalie? Yes, sir. Dr. K, if you would uh, go ahead and answer that question for us. Our students come um, by means of a carpool. Their families drop them off. Sometimes families, several families ride together um, and they also use bus transportation. That's offered to all of our residents that are in the Kenner area. Um, those students that are coming from Metairie generally are carpool students, and there are several spots within Kenner where the students are picked up. But each year, it depends. Um, the bus company that we use honors transportation 
They use um, a system in which they look at the addresses and how many students that are riding the bus in each location. And then from there, they'll determine what the pickup spot and the drop-off spot is. But we have students that are picked up in the morning and then return back home daily. Thank you, Dr. Kennedy. You're welcome. Um, next question is, how does the lottery work for admissions? I'm gonna go ahead and circle back to that. Um, if we can try to get Griselle back into the webinar. Uh, next question is related to meal services. I'll go ahead and take that one. Um, we're happy to provide our middle and high school students breakfast and lunch in our beautiful new cafeteria. Uh, middle and high school does utilize the cafeteria at this campus. Um, we follow all federal program guidelines including those associated with free and reduced lunch programs. Um, and that food service is on site. Next question is related to schedules. So maybe we can start with middle school and they can describe um, kind of what a middle school schedule looks like and then kick it over to high school to describe what a high school schedule would look like um, to answer that question. I'd love it if Ms. Bonanno could speak for middle school for us. Sure. Good evening. For our middle school, we offer all core classes, which is math, science, social studies, and ELA. We have a block schedule on typically on a Monday, we teach all seven periods. On a Tuesday and a Thursday, we teach periods one through four. And on a Wednesday and a Friday, we teach five, six, and seven, and including advisory, independent study, and we do offer clubs for the students that are happening during the day. I did see someone post something about chess club. Our clubs vary each year based on what the teacher's interests are and the students' needs at that year. So we sometimes do offer chess as one of the clubs that are, is taken during the day. Ms. Cusack, do you want to do high school? Sure. Hello again, everybody. Um, so our daily schedule is the same as middle school, is we have that hybrid schedule between 50-minute classes and 90-minute classes. And then on um, that eighth period for us is also that flex period where students can select their clubs that they're interested in. They have that independent study and that uh, school-wide advisory where our counselors support social emotional learning and a variety of other activities occur during that time. We are not on a four by four block. So our students earn seven credits a year. Um, there's specific questions to the counselors about that. Um, Ms. Stallings, I believe is on if you wanna add anything else. Um, hi, good evening, um, everyone. So um, I'm Ms. Stallings. I'm the ninth grade academic counselor, as well as half of the 10th grade. Um, as far as schedules, um, I think both ladies pretty much covered it as far as how the schedules work. Um, high school, of course, it just comes down to what the student needs um, as it relates to graduation. Many of our students come in as high achievers. Um, from their middle schools with having earned already um, high school credits um, in algebra and English one sometimes. So um, they just kind of move through um, the high school courses a little bit quickly. Um, so as far as I guess what we, you know, how the schedules are, are built on a regular basis, it just comes down to what the each individual student um, actually needs. Part of us, um, Part of what helps us determine what they need is um, looking at transcripts and their IGPs or the individual graduation plan, which um, again, each student um, has as they come into the, the high school. Anything else for our teams to add as re regarding schedules? If not, our wonderful on-site IT team has gotten Griselle back up and running. Um, they are amazing. Um, and Griselle, I'll go ahead and let you take it away with your presentation. Thanks so much. So let's try again. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I think Natalie covered how to get the application. I think one of the most important things for you guys to 
know is number one, the deadline date, which is the 4th of February. Applications do have to be in before noon. Um, it is an online application, um, which you guys were able to see how to um, access that via the, the website. You can also uh, write from the browser if you uh, type in discoveryapplication.com, it's going to take you right over to the application um, or to the parent login, uh, which is what you're going to use to submit an application. We um, have many different ways that you can contact us if you have any questions at all. Um, you can call us. That phone number is 504-233-4720. Option one is going to take you right over to our admissions team. You can also email us. Uh, that would be admissions at discoveryhsf.org. Um, I believe it will be up on the screen shortly. Um, and you can uh, reach us by email if you have any questions. Uh, if you have trouble logging in or submitting an application or have any questions in regards to what documents you need, um, please reach out to us and we will uh, help you in, in whatever way that we can. All right, thank you, Grisel. Next question. Do you have any one-to-one -one teaching for special needs students in ninth grade or higher? Hello, thank you for asking that question. Um, just so you know, the goal of the SPED department and our school is for our students to be able to function as independently as possible within their current environment and to prep them for their future environment. So what that means is the goal would be to take the student when they come to us with their current IEP, look at what they have in their current IEP, sit down with the IEP team and map out what the goals are for this particular student and the future and to grab and work on getting into as much independence as possible. So if we need a student that needs to be, you know, needs a little help being on task and working on remediation or exhausting some behaviors, we will provide the supports that we need in order to accomplish that goal. However, as the student moves through the program, the goal would be for this student to develop, to become a functioning member of society as independently in, as possible. So that would mean not having a student develop dependence on having someone having to physically be with them at every moment of the day. So I hope that answers your question. Um, in terms of that, again, the focus is to get the students, no matter who they are, when they come to us, to be functioning as independent as possible in their current environment and the environment that we're prepping them for outside of our school. So if the school is prepping them to enter a four-year university, we need to teach them to be as independent as possible in that four-year university. If the prep is to get that student to be able to function in a um, junior college, a trade school, or to get that student to function in a job and make them a um, productive member of society, then that is what we need to get that student focused on and moving toward that area as independently as possible. Thank you, Stacy. Do you have, next question, do you have a preference for siblings? Griselle, would you mind going over all of our preferences for admissions to Kenner Discovery? Yes, so there are several priorities. The first one is going to be for children of Discovery faculty. The second is the siblings, um, the question that was there of current uh, Kenner Discovery uh, students. The third is uh, Kenner Discovery Ida displaced students. This is for a student that uh, was previously attending the school year uh, Kenner Discovery, but because of Hurricane Ida, they um, unfortunately had to move away. So there is a preference there uh, for those families that are moving back to Jefferson Parish and wish to return to Kenner Discovery. Um, the fourth is residents of Kenner that are considered economically disadvantaged. And then we have residents of Jefferson Parish that are considered economically disadvantaged. And we have the sixth is uh, for Kenner residents. And then um, the seventh preference is for Jefferson Parish residents. Awesome. Thank you, Grissel. Next question. How many reports of bullying have you received this year? 
Um, maybe Dr. Kennedy can start this off. Absolutely, thank you very much. And thanks for asking the question. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a statistic, but I will share with you, as I said earlier, our mission at the school is to make sure all of our students are showing heart. We take students in as they come in from whatever schools they may have been a part of before. Some of them have been with us previously, some have come just this year, um, and we're in the midst of a pandemic. So it's been very interesting to see how students assimilate this year, um, even our students that we've had for a while. Um, there are few, I would say, um, in regards to the number of students that we have, very few bullying uh, complaints or uh, reports. And then those that are given to us are always um, addressed. And so it's important for us, uh, for us to make sure that students understand the way that we want them to um, operate with on, with on our campuses. Our last letter of our core value is T, which is for tolerance. And so we teach acceptance of students always. Um, no matter who they are, where they're coming from. So um, it's a great question. I don't have a actual number to give you or a statistic to give, but I will say that I believe it's a low number. Um, and uh, again, we're talking about two different levels of school, middle school and high school. And in the middle school, students are gonna behave as they behave. And we work to address those things. You know, they have their hormones and a lot of other things going on within them, lots of different feelings and emotions um, throughout the day. And so we deal with those accordingly. Um, and then at the high school level, like I said, it's been uh, very few of those, but we do address anything that comes our way. Thank you, Dr. Kennedy. Next question. Do you have any shortage of staff and teachers or special education teachers? Natalie, I can take that question. Um, certainly there is a shortage of teachers across the nation, as well as in the state of Louisiana and in the greater New Orleans area. We're working closely with local officials to broaden our reach in terms of um, applicants. Um, and you'll see some um, new and different kinds of posts to recruit teachers. Also in science and math and special education, those are um, in short supply across our state. We offer signing bonuses for those, um, for people who come on with us for the first year. At this time at Kenner Discovery, I believe we are fully staffed, but I will tell you in my 40 years of education, this is one of the more trying times. We have had teacher shortages before, but as a result of the pandemic, you know, schools are highly dense places to work. There's a lot of uh, pressure on teachers to maintain their own health, their own families, as well as their job when they're in a room with 26 kids all day, every day. So we are on a one week virtual break right now because of community data, which we make all of our decisions by data, not based on emotion. And again, I'm really, I'm the eternal optimist, but I'm hoping this fifth surge is the last surge. And yes, recruiting is difficult, but we generally do well with um, staffing our positions. Thank you, Dr. Glazer. I do not see any more questions in the q and I'm going to ask Griselle if she was able to get her screen uh, share permissions, which is my fault. <laughs> Griselle, is it cooperating for you? It is. Yay. Would you mind going through the admissions process one more time so we can get that recorded um, since you work so hard on prepping it? Absolutely. Thank you. Just bear with me. Natalie and Griselle, I assure you, if I was running this thing, we'd have a lot more glitches than we've had tonight. Okay, I believe it's working. All right, so just want to walk you through the um, application or how, how you find the application since you've heard such wonderful things about our school and I know that you want to submit an application. So go through that. This is the website. You're going to go to discoveryhsf.org and you can click here where it says learn more for the application period. Um, this will take you directly over to our admissions uh, page of the website. You can also right on the top 
uh, tab in blue, you'll see uh, different tabs. We also have the admissions tab that will take you right there as well. I definitely recommend that you review this section. It has great information on the uh, admissions overview, timelines, the deadline that I was uh, mentioned before, which is the 4th of February. Applications do have to be in uh, before noon um, for anyone who is interested in the 22-23 school year. And then also, we also list the documents that you will need um, when you are getting ready to submit the application. I also want to mention that the application is mobile friendly, so this can all be done from your um, mobile device um, if you have um, internet um, in your uh, mobile device. But I'll take you over to the Kenner Discovery application. So right on top, you'll see apply online for Kenner Discovery. You click there, and that will take you over to the parent login. If you've previously submitted an application um, prior for another student, um, then you already have your login information. You don't want to recreate uh, lo a parent login. You're going to use the same information. So you'll put your email address and your password. Or if you selected to do the single sign-on, then you'll use either your Google, LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. Um, you can do this if you've uh, never created an account, you know, create the account using the single sign-on. Or um, you can go ahead and complete this portion to the right, which will create an account. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the single sign on with Google and then just select my email. It's super easy. I definitely would recommend doing that. Uh, it makes life easier. You don't have to add the bazillion uh, passwords to your list uh, to remember. Once you're logged into your parent account, this is what you're going to see uh, Discovery Schools application. For uh, Dr. John Oshner and Kenner Discovery for uh, grades kindergarten and up, you're going to click here where it says begin Discovery Schools application, which opens up an application um, for you to complete. And this would be for a brand new student. I'm going to show you, though, if you have an, an existing student that's already linked onto your account, um, that is going to look a little different. When you log in, you're going to see, um, in this case, I have some test students. Um, you'll click on the student's name, highlight it blue, and then if this is um, uh, whichever student you're choosing, I'm sorry, you're going to scroll down above our mission, you're going to see um, the, the student's name, so in this case, test, Espanol, uh, Discovery Schools application, and if I already started it, then I'm going to click continue, and that'll open that application up for that student. Um, and then if you have a brand new student, then from this uh, login page, so you have say other students that you've previously applied, but you want to apply for a brand new student that's not listed here, then you'll click on start a new application for another student. Um, and that'll go ahead and start the application. Um, you can also, if you forget how to contact us, we do have right on this um, screen when you're, you log into your parent account, you can click contact, contact us and you'll see the admissions uh, email address and phone number, which you can reach out if you have any issues as far as logging in, um, getting you know your your password reset, or even remembering what your email address. If you uh, forgot what email address you use, um, you can do it from the parent login sign in, um, and I'll show you that real quick. That was part of what I also wanted to to show you, um, but. Um, if this doesn't work, you can reach out to us, like I said, via email um, and phone number. But here you can click forgot your password, forgot your email, and that will go ahead and give you the steps that you need to get that information. All right. Thank you, Griselle. Thank you. Um, we have had another um question come in. How many students in a high school class? This is Ms. Schott. Uh, the high school classes range in size. Um, they cap out at 28, uh, but they, um, but some classes are as small, could be as small as 10. Um, it just really depends on the class, but our, um, our class max is 28. Thank you, Ms. Schott. I do not see any other questions in the Q&A. 
Does anyone else from our panel have anything else they would like to add for our parents who are on the webinar? Um, I would just like to add, please reach out to the admissions department if you can think of any questions after this webinar. Um, we also have application help that's available at the school. We can do a Google Meet with you. We can do a Zoom Meet with you um, if you need any assistance with that application process. However, you have to have it submitted prior to the application closing date or we cannot help you. So please be sure to go in and submit your application. Thank you, Grisel, for sharing that contact information with everyone again. And Dr. Glazer, would you like to close for us? I would. Thank you so much to everyone who joined. Um, we appreciate it. We appreciate your questions as well as your attendance. And hopefully numbers will be down soon and you can actually see the campus. But we're very excited to have you with us tonight and for your interest in Discovery Schools. Thank you everyone for joining us. Have a good night.